One day, Princess couldn't help noticing that all the other Raggy Dolls left her alone, as if there was something wrong with her. Excusez-moi, said Claude, but I cannot talk with you now. He headed off in the direction of the canteen. Lucy was in the workshop. So was Hi-Fi. When they saw Princess coming, they shut the door and locked it. Even Dotty was behaving mysteriously. She knocked on the workshop door and whispered, It's me, Dotty. Open up. The door opened a crack and Dotty slipped inside. Then Princess heard the key turning again in the lock. She couldn't understand it. She looked out of the factory window and saw Sad Sack plodding off through the snow. Where was he going with a ladder under his arm on a Sunday morning? At lunchtime, only back to front turned up. And as he faced the wrong way, he wasn't the easiest raggy doll to talk to. Hmm, I was wondering, said Princess, whether anything's the matter. Uh, no, uh, why should it be? asked back to front. The others, they aren't here. Haven't you noticed? Uh, well, it's nice to be on your own sometimes, isn't it? said back to front. Oh, yes, I suppose so agreed Princess. Sad Sack trudged through the snow till he came to Hunter's Wood. There was a tree growing there with mistletoe hanging from its branches. Dotty had noticed it some weeks ago when they were out for a walk. What on earth does she want this for? thought Sad Sack. Oh well, ours not to reason why. I'd better get on with it, I suppose. He collected a big bunch of mistletoe, climbed down his ladder, and set off for home again. Meanwhile, back in the workshop, Lucy was making paper chains. They were strewn all over the floor. Dotty was painting a large card. She wouldn't let anyone see it till it was ready. But they could guess the colours she was using. Hi-Fi was recording some music. Uh, hello, Princess, said back to front. Oh, cried Princess, taken by surprise. Are you any good with a needle? asked back to front. A needle? exclaimed Princess. Back to front showed her his top hat. The brim was hanging by a thread. Whatever do you want a top hat for? asked Princess. Ah, well, said back to front mysteriously. I expect I could mend it said Princess, examining the brim carefully. Uh, how long will it take you? Oh, about an hour, I should think. Terrific, said back to front. You've got till tea time. In the canteen, Claude was also hard at work. He baked a huge chocolate cake, the best he'd ever made. Sad Sack was home again, licking out the bowls. Not bad, said Sad Sack. I've tasted worse. All we need now, said Claude, is a candle. Where do we find a candle, mon ami? There might be one in Mr Grimes's office, said Sad Sack. You know, in case of a power cut. Bon, we will, how you say, borrow it, said Claude. It is the weekend, he will not notice. Princess had mended the top hat easily. She was trying it on when back to front returned, looking even more mysterious. What heaven's in there? asked Princess. Uh, uh, it's a surprise, said back to front. Uh, why don't you go back to the reject bin, Princess, and have a little kip or something, you know, before all the excitement? What excitement? asked Princess. Oh, did I say excitement? <laughs> said back to front. I don't remember saying excitement. 
princess sat alone in the reject bin thinking. It was about tea time. Soon she would know what her friends were up to. She had a feeling it was to do with her. Could it be? Yes, thought princess suddenly. It is. It must be. The factory clock struck the hour. Three o'clock. It was getting dark already. Not long now before the raggy dolls would meet for tea. Then Princess would find out if she'd guessed their secret. But I'm going to surprise them back, she thought. I'll have to be quick about it, though. There isn't much time. Then Princess did a strange thing. She made sure she was alone. Then she went to the window and opened it and called very softly into the darkness. Do it, to woo, do it, to woo. Presently, there was an answering call from far away. Do it, to woo, do it, to woo. And a shape came flying across the rooftops, soft and feathery in the gathering dusk. It landed on the windowsill beside Princess. Hello. What can I do for you? it asked. Oh, well, Owl, said Princess, it's to be a surprise. <coughs> Hi-Fi had recorded the accompaniment on his headphones. The raggy dolls gathered round the reject bin and began to sing. Ready, everybody? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear princess. Happy birthday to you. Then Claude produced his cake with Mr. Grimes' candle on it. One candle because you arrived one year ago, explained Dotty. You're the youngest. Sad Sack came first. He was alone for ages and ages. Ages and ages. Then I came, then Hi-Fi, then Lucy, then back to front, and then Claude. Have a piece of binde cake, said Claude. It is delicieux, the best, made entirely by me. Lucy decorated the reject bin with her paper chains, and Sad Sack hung some mistletoe from the nearest lamp. What's that for? asked Lucy. I don't know, said Sad Sack. It's Dotty's idea. You kiss under mistletoe, explained Dotty. Now we can all give Princess a binde kiss. Oh, no! Do we have to? complained Sad Sack. Yes, we must, said Dotty firmly. To show her how much we love her, and in case she had any doubts, go on, Sad Sack, give her a kiss. I wouldn't have picked it. If I'd known, grumbled Sad Sack. Then Dotty gave Princess the card she'd been making. Inside, it said, Happy Bin Day to Princess from all her raggy doll friends. Now I'll entertain you all with a conjuring trick, said Back to Front. Music, please, maestro. Well done for once, said Dotty. I've been practising, said Back to Front. I think you're ever so clever, cried Princess. And now, dear friends, it's time for my surprise. Look. She pointed to the windowsill where her friend Owl had just settled. He's going to take us for a moonlight flight, explained Princess. It's my bin day treat for you. We'll fly over Hunter's Wood and Pumpernickel's Field and Mr Grimes's toy factory. What a super idea, said Dotty. Three cheers for Princess. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! I think I'll stay behind. I might not enjoy it, said Sad Sack. I'm sure you will, said Princess. And she gave him an even bigger kiss. Raggy doll, raggy doll, raggy doll, are happy just to be. 
Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. One day, the raggy dolls woke up to find a taxi in front of Mr. Grimes' toy factory. It had brought a man with a pointed beard and a large black hat. He is French, said Claude. How can you possibly tell? snapped Dottie. He has a French manner about him, said Claude admiringly. I can tell a Frenchman anywhere. I wonder what he's come for, said Lucy. So do I, said Sadsack. I bet it leads to trouble. In his office, Mr. Grimes was looking at the visitor's card with a puzzled expression. It didn't have a name or address on it, just splashes of paint. Uh, very nice, said Mr. Grimes. And uh, what can I do for you? Andre G. Hamburger is the name, said the visitor. Founder of the Hamburger School of Toy Art, New York, New York. Oh, yes said Mr. Grimes. I am an artiste, explained Mr. Hamburger. I produce works of art. I see, said Mr. Grimes. But he didn't really. Andre G. Hamburger went on. Now, I've heard tell on the grapevine that Grimes' toy factory has got real class. So how's about a lightning tour, buddy? Show me the works. He isn't French, said Dotty. He's American. Well, he has a French name, said Claude. Andre is a French name. Well, Hamburger certainly isn't, said Dotty firmly. They're coming this way. We'd better hide, said Lucy. Good thinking, agreed Dotty. So the raggy dolls hid in the reject bin. One machine was turning out Dutch dolls. Another was making poodles. They're real cute, but they ain't what I'm looking for. No, siree. Uh, what are you looking for? shouted Mr. Grimes. I need something new. Novelties. Dolls with a difference, yelled Mr. Hamburger. And when I found what I want, you'll find I ain't mean when it comes to payment. Mr. Grimes thought hard. Suddenly, he had a brainwave. The reject bin, of course. Uh, I have a special collection of one-off dolls, said Mr. Grimes. Each one's different in a different way. Now you're talking, said Andre G. Hamburger. He picked up Lucy. Wow! Then he picked up Sad Sack. Terrific! And finally, he picked up Claude. In the end, Mr. Hamburger just chose two raggy dolls, back to front and Dotty. Lucy was still trembling. Oh, do you think he'll take Dotty and back to front to New York? She asked. It's across the Atlantic Ocean, said Princess, and that's unthinkable. Where's High Five? He has disappeared, said Claude. The driver hadn't noticed Hi-Fi hide himself at the back of his taxi. Hi-Fi had found himself a safe perch and was waiting. He heard Mr. Hamburger climb in. They were off. When the taxi reached the station, Hi-Fi managed to hide in one of Mr. Hamburger's holdalls. Soon, Andre G. Hamburger, back to front, Dotty and Hi-Fi were all on the train, speeding towards London. Dotty and back to front huddled together inside the darkness of their box. They would have been very surprised to know that Hi-Fi was in a bag on the luggage rack just beside them. Before long, the sound of the train and the swaying of the carriage sent everyone to sleep. Andre G. Hamburger dreamt of the paintings he was going to sell. His latest work showed a toy tank inside a fish tank. He was going to call it Tank in a Tank. Back to front,
dreamt that he was in Mr. Grimes' toy factory again, bobbing up and down on the conveyor belt with dozens of other dolls just like him. Back to front woke with a start to find himself in Mr. Hamburger's studio. That's funny, he thought. I seem to be flying. Oh, law! He looked down and saw that he was attached to a wire coat hanger that was dangling in front of a mirror. He'd been made into a picture. Mr. Hamburger was standing at the other end of the studio. Yes, siree, he was saying. That's just dandy. I shall call you Mirror Doll. And as for you, sweetheart, I shall call your picture Doll with Splashes. Mr. Hamburger squeezed some glue on Dotty's back and stuck her on a piece of canvas. He sloshed a can of paint all over her. Andre G. Hamburger, you are a genius, said Andre G. Hamburger, admiring his work. There you have it, doll with splashes. Mr. Hamburger hung Dotty's picture on the wall beside back to front. Then he went off to have some lunch. Well, said Dotty, this is a fine mess. What are we going to do? No problem, said back to front. He wriggled and squirmed, but he couldn't get free. I'm stuck too, said Dotty, and I'm beginning to get annoyed. If only Hi-Fi was here, he'd think of something, said back to front. Don't be silly, said Dotty. Hi-Fi's miles away. Oh, no, 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 I'm no, 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 not, cried Hi-Fi. And there he was, balancing on the picture rail just above them. R -r 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 Raggy doll to the r -r rescue. I've got Mr. Hamburger's wire clippers and I'll have you f free in a j j jiffy. Hold still. It's your turn now, Dotty, said back to front when he was safely on the ground again. Hi-Fi grabbed one leg and back to front grabbed the other and together they pulled. They pulled and they pulled and they pulled. At last, the glue on her back came unstuck. All three raggy dolls lay in a heap on the floor. Well done, chaps, said Dotty. But how do we get home? Da -da -da That's easy, said Hi-Fi. I've invented a b -b button b box that'll b beam us home. Now that's what I call a real novelty, said Dotty admiringly. He's a doll of the future, all right, agreed back to front. Beam away, Hi-Fi. So Hi-Fi pressed the button. And suddenly, the raggy dolls weren't there anymore. Mr. Hamburger was very surprised when he came back after lunch. What had happened to his works of art? Jumpin' Jiminy Cricket! Now where in this little old world did those dolls go? He stared at the empty spaces in his pictures. Then he grinned. Andre G. Hamburger, you are a genius. Next day, people queued for miles to see his exhibition. The Raggy Dolls read all about it in Mr. Grimes' evening paper. There was a big photograph, and underneath it it said, Mr. Andre G. Hamburger's toy art exhibition opened in London today. It was the success of the century. Two pictures, in particular, caused a sensation. They were called Disappearing Doll 1 and Disappearing Doll 2. Disappearing Doll 1 is me, said Back to Front proudly. And Disappearing Doll 2 is me, said Dotty. Claude was studying Hi-Fi's button box. Uh, tell me, mon ami, he said, could this uh, thing, how you say, Beam me a la France? One day, m m maybe, said Hi-Fi. I'm still w w w working on it. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind. Like the raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog, dolls like you and me. Raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog, made him perfectly. So if 
you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs. Stand on your two left feet and join. 